Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. My name is Linda. This is Nepwood Cottage and I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, if you're brand new, welcome, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you guys how I make um, my sew-in labels and we'll make a couple of scrunchies together before I have to run off and go to work. Luckily I work from home. Um, I do work kind of a call center job. It isn't kind of a call center job. It is a call center job but I can do it from home, which is really nice. Um, every so often in, uh, on Route 99, the hallway route, uh, there is butt-to-butt -butt traffic. The uh, individuals I share the hallway with sometimes stop for no reason, they don't signal, and they merge. So every once in a while, it's a little bit tricky to get down the hallway because when mom has to go to work, everybody feels like they need to go with me. So, to that end, we are going to make, like I said, a couple of scrunchies. I'm going to show you how I make my sew-in labels. This is just how I do it. If someone else has a different way, that's fantastic. I know I've seen a few different um, tutorials on YouTube. This just works for me for right now until I get to a position where the sales are just rolling in and I can order labels. But for right now, this works just fine. It's all about branding and getting our name out there anyway. So that's just kind of how I do it. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Okay, so I just used the paper cutter to trim up my labels. I use, I think it's 7 8 inch ribbon is what I use. And so I like my labels to come all the way across the ribbon. I think it keeps it nicer longer so that the ribbon doesn't get all dirty and gross. Um, then I use the heat resistant tape to put the label pieces together. Um, if I'd done a better job of lining these up, I wouldn't need to cut and paste them like this, but I didn't do a great job of lining it up, so there you go. Um, so when I go to put it on to the ribbon, sometimes it's a little bit tricky because ribbon is thin. And of course you can just lay this on a cutting on a cutting board, on an ironing board and just iron straight across and it's probably easier but it's actually what you're seeing here is what i normally do when i'm working my day job between phone calls i will actually do this process and you'd be amazed at how many labels you can attach to a piece of ribbon in an eight hour shift it's amazing and it goes by really quickly but that's what i use the flat iron for is because it's handheld it's convenient and it works um, to transfer everything onto that ribbon and then of course you know you peel the ribbon off or the backing off and there you have it and it looks really nice I think if I have any pieces where I've kind of gotten a little crazy and it wasn't lined up super well I just trim that off with a scissor and you'll see that here in just a second um, but yeah I just kind of go through and then I trim them to the size that I need and see there just trim off that little bit of extra and here I'm just testing to make sure that I had it lined up right. I did test it with a plain piece of paper before I did do the whole like transfer paper thing because transfer paper is actually kind of spendy. But overall, for the label for the labels themselves, it's not expensive at all. But regardless, so here I am trimming them all up, and I'll go through like an entire roll of ribbon just making labels. Um, so once those are made. I'm going to get my sewing machine set up so that I can start sewing a scrunchie with you guys. Okay, so I have to use this little thread thing because Hagrid broke the actual holder for my thread off my sewing machine. And the machine itself works okay, so I haven't replaced the machine yet. But that thing actually works really well for thread. And I saw it off of one of my Korean YouTubers channels is what they actually used. Um, you can use it with like the cone thread, which I have some of those, or just regular spools. It's not bad. And it comes in pretty handy, and it meant that I didn't actually have to go get a new, a new sewing machine when I really couldn't afford a new sewing machine. Because here in our shop, we are all about the budget. Making things um, on the cheap, because... Um, unless you want to have really high ridiculous prices, which means that you literally cannot compete with, you know, the stuff coming out of other countries. Um, but 
I like to keep my costs down anyway, just because that's how I naturally am. I'm naturally a pretty thrifty person. I get every scrap of fabric used up and I try not to waste. So here I'm just sewing the end. I know a lot of people put their tags in the end. I'm not, I don't care for it there, I guess. So anyway, I just um, complete my stitch and let's see. I didn't bother like letting you guys watch me make a whole bunch of these. We're just gonna do one together because I have to, you know, I mean, once you've seen one scrunchie made, you really need 8,000 of them in the same video. Um, but that's what I do. So I put the, the seam edges together because I, it makes sure that my scrunchie is straight. I was trying to do it the other way for some reason and I found that every once in a while my scrunchies weren't lining up like they should, which was like, super annoying. So I do it this way now and it works much better. And then I'm gonna take my tag and I just kind of, I slide it in, make sure it's lined up and boom, that's it. And then I just keep on going. Um, let's see, I'm trying to give you guys a better angle. Please excuse the dog beds in the back. They like to lay on blankets and they make nests out of them. And I think if they could figure out some way to make tents in my living room, they'd do that too. But anyway, they're playing with their blankets and each other. So anyhow, so I just keep on going, just sew on the side here. Um, and this is the burrito method. I find it's a lot easier just because, I just do. I find it to be a lot easier than making the tube and turning. It does take a little bit longer I like the finished product just as well as anything else, but it means I don't have to sew it and then flip it and then bring it back to sew it again. This I just sew it once, and normally what I do is I'll sew up a bunch of these little things and I'll flip them all right side out, stuff them with elastic, and then I'll sew up the little seam spot, and I get it done pretty quickly. Um, and of course, you know, doing it with the camera and everything else. I don't know why. It's like when people watch me when I type, I go from being able to type really fast to being able to like not knowing how to type at all. It's really kind of a weird thing. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna backstitch that and that's that. Okay, so once I have it sewn up, then where's the end up? I just clip off my extra strings if I need to. And then, um, I just flip them right side out. Just kind of reach in, feel around. There it is. And honestly, once I get the little tag pulled through, it's actually, for whatever reason, it's a little bit easier to flip it out. I don't know why. It just seems to be easier. And it could just be all in my head, I have no idea. Um, but anyway, I do the, I think they call it the burrito technique. So I'm like kind of a continuous tube, so to speak. Um, and then, let's see. This is a little better. Okay, so then I take, I can't remember what this is called. I use this thing and it's how I will stuff the elastic into the casing. And then once I get to the end, I think it's called a bin, no. Bindi, bondi, bandy. I don't remember. It has to be. And I get it to where I need it. And I snip it. And then because this is just the thin elastic, I just do a surgeon's knot, unlike a granny's knot, because the surgeon's knot won't come undone, which is why surgeons use them. And then I will just quickly stitch across here. Usually what I do also is I will put a pin through where I need to sew, and I'll actually set up several um, scrunchies in that way. 
And then there you have it. A scrunchie with a tag. And, um, you know, ideally I'd be able to order like, you know, tags and sort of that sort of thing. And at some point I probably will. But um, for now this, it works and they look nice. I mean, I don't think they look bad. It has the washing instructions on the other side. Um, you know, hand wash only, no bleach, and just lay flat to dry. <clears throat> this pattern is so cute. It's so cottage quarry. I love that. Um, but anyway, so that's our um, video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe if you are enjoying this kind of content to let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see that I'm doing as I'm working on this new business venture. Um, well, new-ish. Because it's new because I'm going on Shopify. It's ish because I have had businesses before, but I've never done anything like this uh, with Shopify and having my own actual website. So that's really exciting. Um, so yeah, so let me know. And if you guys make any um, scrunchies or you'd like to make scrunchies, let me know, um, you know, do you do the burrito method or do you do like the tube and then like reverse it kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So until next time, thank you guys so much for being here and I hope you guys have an amazing day and I will see you guys soon. Bye.